Now in my early 20s when I just started working, there was a period where I would go one month, maybe even two months without even touching my paycheck. And that was because I had a set of methods that I use in my daily life when it came to using money. So in this video, I will share those four money hacks so that you can join me on the path of being a future millionaire. Number one is going to be the 50, 30, 20 method. So with this budgeting technique, you will split your after tax pay into three categories, 50%, 30%, and 20%. And you will do it in this structure. 50% of that pay will be your needs. So when we talk about needs, we're going to talk about taking care of your car. So that's going to be gas. Then we're going to talk about food. Then we're talking about rent, utility bills, your mortgage if you have anything like that when it pertains to your child your monthly expenses just anything that you could put into a list that yo i cannot live without these things and i need this 50 percent money to take care of it so that is what you put in that 50 percent bracket now you're going to move on to the 30 percent bracket and these are going to be the things that you call your wants so that's going to be your Amazon purchases. <laughs> that's going to be maybe going out with friends, maybe buying gifts for a special occasion, maybe changing a specific part on the car that you don't need for the car to function, but it makes the car look good or maybe move faster. Just anything that won't necessarily push the necessities in your life, but more so the comfort of your life. So these are the things that I will classify as wants. And then lastly, in the 20% bracket, you will have your savings slash investments. And this is the part where the money that you actually make will go towards your future or the money will go towards building and working for itself to gain more money. So think about stuff like your retirement account. Think about stuff like your emergency fund. Think about maybe starting dividend investing and learn how to make your money make more money for you over time passively and to me that is one of the only passive ways that you can make money like really not doing anything through dividend investing so that is the 50 20 30 rule and i would remember when i usually get my paycheck as soon as i get it i take out my pen and my paper and not really a fan of using excel but you could use it if you want but nothing beats the pen and paper and when I usually take out my pen and paper and I put my columns 50, 30, 20, and I try to list out as much things as I needed to cover. And usually your fixed costs like rent and anything that the price is stable, like any bills, any grocery, anything that you need for your day to day is generally what you classify as your needs. And I would just make a list and put everything in that needs column and I'll move over to the wants and then I couldn't wait to get to the investment part because I'm telling them, I work money now so your boy can invest more. So I was so happy to put things in that column and it allowed me to see, yo, you know, so you really overspend a month time and you really need to live on this much. Fortunately, I'm in a position where my salary is decent so I could make these drastic changes and say that I can live on way less than what I was making. And at that point also, I was paying substantially less rent because you, you just uh, move out into the working world for yourself. So you get some links, you make some connection, you live at some place where you're, you pay a really cheap rent and you live really close to work. So it was very easy, no need for tool, no need for a lot of gas no need to pay a lot of rent also you were just focusing on food and i didn't eat out a lot those that i didn't eat out a lot those times because it was before covid so <laughs> gym was my best friend and being healthy was my best friend so in a way i was saving a lot of money so when i get my pay for one month that one month pay would stretch for like two months without me even have to touch it so the next pay will come as strictly investments and savings not even going to the wants category just go straight into investments and savings so that's why it was so easy for me to save that five hundred thousand dollars in the space of three months now my second method is going to be the pay yourself first method and i love this because i'm treating myself as a business and let's face it when you get your salary government take them share whoever you have standing order with or whoever loan you have take them share and uh, just all the taxes and all the 
expenses take them share. So it's only fair that you separate your portion of the money because I never you are nobody work it, you alone work it. So it's only fair that you take your share of the money and give it to yourself first. So when it comes to paying yourself first, you have no excuses as it pertains to savings. Because as soon as you get your paycheck, you separate a percentage that you think is fit or by your math, you know that is fit for you. So you put that down in your savings account as soon as you get it. So we're going to forget about, you know, covering all your needs. And we're going to forget about covering all your wants first. The first priority is just to make sure that you are paid your percentage. So it could be the same 50, 30, 20. But as soon as you get to pay, just focus on taking that 20% out first. Because your investments are really paying you first when you look at it that way. Because your retirement is going straight to you. Your investments are directly benefiting you because your money is growing over time. So you flip, in a way, you would flip the 50, 30, 20% rule and pay yourself first by putting that 20% in an account. So once you pay yourself first, then you can focus on paying all your needs, basically all your bills. You can do that as they come. And then by virtue, you're going to be left with some money that you could only use it on stuff that you want so you won't spend more than what you have because what you have is just what you have unless you're going to bring in credit and that is where people could fall into a dangerous trap of spending more than what is actually coming in but the pay yourself first method i, I love that method just think about it so i get my paycheck one like say the end of end of the month you know everybody getting paid at the end of the month so you get your paycheck and as soon as i get my paycheck and i have like a saving target in my head let's say i want to save fifty thousand dollars for myself every month as soon as i get my paycheck before mass jewel dick tama hurry take their money from my account i take up my 50 grand and send it to my savings account myself pay me good so when a bill come boom me chop it so Whenever I, I want come up and say I want a hair clip or I come buy from Amazon or whatever, boom, I chop it. Because the most important part, and to, I am the most important part, <laughs> I put my money down for savings. So I paid myself. So that's another method that you could use if you want to tackle a saving goal. And it's also a budgeting tactic. Pay yourself first. I'm going to check back in with the rest of this video later. We have two methods that I'm going to share with you. And if you really want to learn those methods, try them through tested methods, then continue to watch yourself this video. All right, so it's the end of the shift, so you know what I'm going to do right after this going to the gym because you know that investing is not only about money it's about your health also because there is no wealth without health <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the third method that I use to stay out of debt in my 20s so stay tuned all right so the third method is going to be the envelope method or the envelope method Whatever you want to pronounce that word. But you remember when you used to go to church? And for some of us, you still go to church. You really need to pull up my socks when it comes to that. But remember, we used to go to church and they're collecting tithes and offering. And you see some people actually put the money in an envelope. So that means that whenever they got their pay and they put down 15% of their income, whatever the tithe in, um, percentage income is or the percentage split is, they normally put down that amount in an envelope and say this is towards the tithing for the church. So adapt that same principle but use it with all aspects of your life. So if you're going to, if you know that your grocery bill, you've done your budget and your grocery bill is around $40,000 for the month, then you would just have an envelope or envelope <laughs> that says groceries and you put the 40 grand in that envelope likewise with utilities you can even split them up into light bill water internet cable whoever you want to split up the the utilities electricity you will just assign money to certain envelopes so look at this example and you'll see why the envelope method works you go to the supermarket and you have 40 grand in the envelope just know what's the 
you won't be able to spend more than 40 grand because only 40 grand are the envelope. So if you go to the cashier and it's 40,000 and a dollar, if the cashier nice to you like that, they might give you it. If not, you have to put back an item. So it forces you to stay on track. And likewise, it's the same thing with savings. So you make an envelope for saving. At the same time, you just go to an ATM. If your ATM allows you to do this and do the deposit, you just put in an envelope in the ATM and deposit it like cash. You're good to go because it is cash on the inside. So people use the envelope method because it's more physical and they can see what they're actually doing and they have more discipline that way. But for me, it's too easy because there's a drawback with it. You have access to the cash. So even if you have it in an envelope and you whoop and seal it and, and hide it in a drawer, you still have access. All you need is a, your hands, fingers, tear it, open it, use the money or put money from another envelope to another envelope. So I, I didn't really use this method it helped me in the beginning of starting out when I was way small. So this is before I even started working from when I was selling digestive in grade six. This is how I usually split up my money. I say, all right, this is the money that I made from the digestive. And then I split it up in uh, um, one envelope that says profit and another envelope that I use to buy more digestive so i always put it um profit one side and then use the money to buy more digestive and that's so how i was able to save in grade six to buy bay bay blades if you remember that anime i will put it up right here bay blades That's how I saved up my money. And on Fridays, we normally go to TST and buy the chicken sandwich. So that's how I usually save up my money. So our fourth method is going to be the zero-based budget method. So you're hearing the word zero, but let me give you an example to understand this. Yeah, so not a bit. I'm actually working out. <laughs> so you get your salary, you get your paycheck. After tax, you have like $150,000. So this one, you won't be splitting up in any percentages, putting in any envelope or paying yourself first. This one is a little detail. Let me not say a little detail. It's the most detailed budget of them all. And what you're going to do is for every single dollar for every little cent you have in that $150,000, you are going to allocate a purpose to that money. So it's going to be a very detailed list. So you're going to sit down with your pen and your paper. You're going to put your starting balance of $150,000. And you're going to write a list of where all that money goes. So grocery, gas, insurance, registration, light bill, water bill, phone bill, credit where you send to your friend, your man, your woman, <laughs> savings account, investment, Amazon, Sheen, Bridget's, um, <laughs> money where you give wiper man, everything until that $100,000 reaches $0 on paper. So when you have that list, you know exactly where your money is going to. Everything is allocated. Every money a work for them life. Every cent have a purpose. And this budget to me, I would not recommend it for a first time because even I don't use it. So this zero BS budget is very detailed, is very hard. But if you really want to hold yourself, drip up, and know exactly where your money should go. And I think this is a great method for you because it leaves no wiggle room and it leaves no room to even second guess yourself because every dollar has a purpose that you have allocated. Even though I only use two of those tips, I think that these budgeting tips will really help you in your life to learn how to manage money. Because some people might say, why should I learn to manage money and I'm poor? Let's just say that skills are transferable. And if you are able to manage $100 perfectly, then imagine what you could do with a million dollars. So these are my little gems. Until next time, thank you for like, sharing, and subscribing to this channel. And as always, work hard, make money, and happy investing. Not only in money, but also your health and yourself. You know, I try to cut in. Gym time, sooner or later. <laughs>